Live on Joy News Desk, it's time for us to talk tech on Tech Talk with Spikey. Hi, Spikey. Hey. Happy New Year. I don't think we've met no, on the set this year. We haven't met. We haven't met. So maybe yes, happy yes, returns. Yes, 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 yes. Now, it's not been a happy New Year for Donald Trump at all. No, it hasn't. And yeah, it's, it's his fault, if I may put it that way. Donald Trump has not been one to follow the, you know, the policies and guidelines of every social media platform he finds himself on. And as a result, ended up being blocked across platforms, Facebook, on Twitter, yeah, and indefinitely on Facebook, actually. He was blocked indefinitely. Mark Zuckerberg actually posted on his personal Facebook um, page that he was not, you know, they were going to block him indefinitely because his actions were contributing to all the disturbances that were happening in the United States of America. And we're talking about the breaking into the Capitol the building. Capitol building yeah. It was just people were expecting him to come out and say something. But then according to all these social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, what Donald Trump was po posting was inciting these people to go do what they did. And mm -hmm. as a result, they... And I mean, this happened after a rally that they had. Yeah. So if it's, you know, understandable that those assumptions will be made. But Twitter, Twitter released his account after he posted what seemed to be a concession speech on the White House um, social media manager's page. I mean, because his page was blocked for 12 hours yeah. until he deletes those posts, which is something that, um, what do you call it, Twitter is actually very good at. <laughs> if you post something that they don't think, you know, follows their guidelines, they block you. 12 hours, delete it, and they give it back. If you don't, you stay blocked. It's very interesting. Donald Trump and this election has actually revealed to me a lot about how Twitter works. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whenever he tweets, especially about the election results, mm -hmm. you find a disclaimer at the bottom yes. from Twitter that what he's saying could be fake news exactly. because they, his, his claims have not been verified. Mm -hmm. I want to know, is, it, is this how they scrutinize all of our tweets when we are going about our business on Twitter? Yeah, there are certain keywords that if they find in your tweets, they would, you know, it would be marked. I've been a victim of such a block before because I posted certain words that consecutively could mean something that was insulting to a certain group of people, be it uh, people who are suffering from mental disorders or whatever it is. And, and I, wasn't in t I wasn't insulting anyone, but the arrangement of my words, according to the computer, it triggered, the algorithm. It triggered the algorithm and then just decided that, hey, you seem to be cyberbullying somebody with a mental disorder, so we're blocking you. I'm like, oh, wait, I wasn't blocking, I wasn't... But, but, but how, do we, how do we, when we are tweeting, mm. avoid these things? Because I, it's not just Twitter. I am, a, a good friend of mine lost his entire Instagram mm. account because I think he posted some pictures that had copyright issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do we avoid you know, um, these problems when we're on social media? Well, like I was mentioning in the beginning, community guidelines, policies, all these platforms have their rules and regulations. And we like to just go and click accept, agree, and I just go on to use them without knowing the actual rules behind the platform that you're using. Certain platforms will not allow you to use certain, you know, um, words, certain images, or certain content that you do not own, like you, you said. Those community guidelines are so long, there are so many. But you could rely on other people who've experienced these things. So for instance, if I've experienced these things, I would post it, I'll put it out there. So you can just Google it, you know, a summary of this. Someone definitely would have summarized it on the mm, internet. Mm, they could read that and then, yeah, know what to do. And, you know, so just go find out do's and don'ts of Twitter, or do's and don'ts of Facebook, or do's and don'ts of YouTube or IG. And now, um, yeah, okay. we'd, we'd better be finding out some news and notes on WhatsApp because I hear there's an ultimatum on WhatsApp now. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's not surprising, but surprising that Facebook owner of WhatsApp now would take such a decision to say that, hey, most of your data on WhatsApp is going to be shared with Facebook, the mother company, which is the largest social media platform in the world. Now, a lot of people do not like this because they think that... Um, Sharing my information with uh, Facebook does not necessarily make me feel safe. Okay, let, let, let's, let's break it down. Mm -hmm. When they say sharing data with Facebook, what are they sharing? So what you're seeing on your screens right now, they're sharing your phone model, your operating system, the battery status of your phone, the signal strength, the time zone of your phone, which essentially will let them know exactly where your phone is, um, your IP address, which is the unique 
in internet identifier of your phone and your WhatsApp usage, how much you're using WhatsApp, how many times you open it, how many times you close it, how long you stay on it. And payments and transactions, you know, in certain countries, they are allowed to use WhatsApp to make payments. So you have WhatsApp pay and, that. and your status updates. So all the things that you're doing on WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is going to be paying attention to And these. group details. Re group details, exactly. What does that mean? Like so when you're in a group, like all the information, not the chats, not the content of the, of the group, but like what the group is wholly about. And profile pictures and your about info. So. Now, now, okay, so here's my thing, Spikey. This is a lot of information. Yes. I'm a bit relieved that the actual messages are not there, mm. but it seems very intrusive. What could they be using the information for? Um, you know, I've always said this thing. If you're using a free service on the internet and there's no means of them taking money from you, then you are the product. So they are selling you to make money. When I say they're selling you, they're taking you and your identification. Marketing right now is very big on what we call demographics. Understanding the person using the device and how much they use it, what they use it for, informs you know, brands to know how to target you. Because that essentially makes their advertising budget effective. If I'm going to put $3 million in advertising, I want to be sure that I'm reaching Daniel and his friends and not um, Ezekiel and his friends, because maybe Daniel likes African shirts and I'm selling African shirts. Ezekiel likes suits and I do adverts and Ezekiel is seeing them and Daniel is not seeing them. I'm but, losing but, out but, on But that. they could also... I mean, they could also use time zone and stuff like that to make the phones explode when I'm sleeping and things like that. Anyway, um, Sparky, I, I wanted to end it on, on this point, but uh, thanks so much for bringing us the information that you did. Be careful when you're using your WhatsApp. Those of us watching. Well, a lot of people are switching right now. Even Elon Musk has people to switch the signal. They're saying that they don't feel safe. Oh, so signal is a new social media. It's always been there. It's using the same protocol that WhatsApp uses to encrypt your messages. But it's, it's open source, meaning that it's not for profit. What about so, Telegram? Yeah, I love Telegram. But if I say right now, people will say I'm being a Telegram evangelist. So for the first time, I'm not pushing Telegram. Well, you know what <laughs> Telegram evangelist is called, right? Tell evangelist. <laughs> um, we'll be back That's with a good business. one. <laughs> with Daryl Crowell. Stay with us.